Did India kill the dinosaurs? Now, that's not a question you often hear, and it's not one that I'm guessing many of you have asked. But Princeton University professor Goethe Keller has conducted extensive research on exactly this and thinks that it did, that India did actually kill the dinosaurs. The Indian subcontinent, which includes modern-day India, as well as Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives, Pakistan and Sri Lanka, was once part of the Gondwana supercontinent, which came into existence over 500 million years ago. Gondwana also included the Arabian Peninsula, as well as modern-day Antarctica, South America, Africa, Madagascar and the Australian continent. Incidentally, this supercontinent, the segments of which account for over half of the world's landmass, is named after a region of India which, in Sanskrit, means Forest of the Gonds. The Gondi people are a community living in the forests of central India to this day. All the continents, including Gondwana, fused as the Pangaea supercontinent 300 million years ago, and then broke away again about 175 million years ago. This was the last time the world was one. Gondwana started breaking up in the early Jurassic era, when Africa split away. The continental drift continued with the Indian subcontinent moving the fastest of all of the plates. Then the subcontinent was the site of a monumental volcanic event, as it passed over a thinner part of the Earth's crust we call the Reunion Hotspot. Eruptions taking place over 750,000 years spewed lava over more than 50 million square kilometres. This event formed India's Deccan Traps, one of the largest volcanic features in the world. You actually can see this very clearly when you're coming into land at Mumbai airport and you're flying over the ghats where you see these great cliff faces made out of this volcanic rock. Now, this is where the work of Professor Keller from Princeton comes in. She decided to conduct research that would assess the timing, scale and effects of these eruptions in an effort to determine whether they could really have caused the Cretaceous Tertiary Boundary Mass Extinction, KTB. Uh, and that event is the one that killed the dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. Scholars had already been debating for over 30 years about whether the KTB mass extinction was caused by Deccan volcanism, a theory first proposed actually in 1978, or rather by the impact of a meteor, a theory proposed in 1980 and then strengthened in 1990 when the Chichilla crater was discovered in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Professor Keller found that the KTB event coincided with a 10,000 year period of global heating that occurred following the most extensive volcanic eruptions in the Indian Deccan. Meanwhile, she also pleased Chicxulub's impact with Earth at about 120,000 years before the mass extinction, with no discernible after effects, thus leaving India's Deccan volcanism as the leading suspect in the death of the dinosaurs. And if that hadn't happened, the mammals that survived might never have prospered as they did in the absence of their dinosaur predators. And of course, they eventually evolved into us. Apart from being really interesting, how does this relate to India's diversity? Well, the Deccan Traps are but one of several unique physiographic features in a country of diverse landscapes. Of course, perhaps the most best known feature of the Indian subcontinent is the Himalaya the tallest mountain range in the world, commonly known as the Himalayas. Around 10 million years after Deccan volcanism, the Earth's tallest mountains were born. The Indian subcontinent collided with Eurasia, creating the Himalaya, or the abode of snow, which is what it means uh, if you translate it from the Sanskrit. And this served as a home to numerous gods from different Indian spiritual traditions uh, in the Indian mythology and formed a natural boundary for the country's northern regions. We will soon see how the Deccan Traps, the Himalaya and other unique landscapes contribute to India's diversity of diversities.